Google Colab is a cloud-based platform that allows you to write and execute Python code in an interactive environment known as Jupyter Notebooks. If you're not familiar with Jupyter or Jupyter Notebooks, they allow you to write Python code interactively. This means that you can write code, run it, and see the output immediately without leaving your browser. When it comes to machine learning and data science, Jupyter Notebooks are pretty much the go-to tool used for coding various machine learning models. So it's really important to get familiar with Jupyter Notebooks in general, or even Google Colab, because they're basically structured and function in pretty much exactly the same way. The great thing about these Jupyter Notebooks is that you could execute various snippets of code. So for example, here we're, we can import NumPy and Matplotlib, and we could plot a specific graph and automatically visualize it here just by executing this small snippet of code. However, the great thing about Google Colab is that it's hosted on Google servers, meaning that you have access to GPUs and TPUs. So if we take a quick look here under runtime and change runtime type, we can see that by default, we are using the CPU but we could change it to use the, the GPU and the TPU. And this really comes in handy when we're training machine learning models because not always uh, or not everyone has access to a GPU locally. So we can use a GPU for free uh, in the cloud. However, do keep in mind that because this is a free version, we are limited to the amount of resources that we could use. So using it for basic machine learning models or just for basic learning purposes, this free version is completely enough. But if we ever wanted to have more resources, then we could always upgrade to the paid pro version of this. But for learning purposes, this free version is enough. To get started with using Google Colab, you're going to want to head on over to your browser here and go to collab.google.com. And when you hit enter, it opens up exactly this uh, web page. And so if you want to get started, we're going to need to first sign in into our Google account. So it would be a good idea that you already have a Gmail or Google account because we're going to be needing that because all these Jupyter notebooks or the Colab notebooks are going to be saved in our Google Drive. So to be able to use this, we're going to have to sign in to our Google account here. So go ahead and type in your email, sign in, go through the next steps, and then we'll be able to start using Google Colab. Once you sign in, you'll see this pop up window in your Google Colab page. You have various options here on the side to choose from. Starting with the examples, here are a list of Google Colab notebooks that you can take a look at to see how you can use various functionalities and how to pretty much get started with Google Colab. Your recent tab will show you what your recent notebooks that you have been working on. Your Google Drive tab is where your notebooks are going to be stored, the ones that you're going to be creating. You have a GitHub tab where you could basically connect to your GitHub repository and if you have any uh, notebooks saved in your repository, then you could upload them and open them here in Google Colab. And you could, of course, upload different files here as well. To get started with creating our new notebook, we'll click on this new notebook button. And now this just opened a completely fresh new Google Colab notebook completely empty and ready to be used. To get started, let's first close this release notes because we're not going to be needing that. And let's rename our notebook. Here we could just double click and rename to whatever we want. So let's call this Google Colab Basics. In Google Colab, you write Python code in cells. So for example, let's start off with our traditional printing of hello world. So let's print hello world. And to execute this cell or this snippet of code, you could click the play button here, or you could click 
hit shift enter on your keyboard. So let's click play for now. And there we have it, it printed out hello world. Now let's say we want to create a new cell to execute a different snippet of code. If we hover over here in the center, we get this plus code button. When, when we click on that, we get a new cell to execute. So let's say we want to create a new variable x and assign it the value of 5. Now we could print the value of that variable using the traditional print method. And when we do that and we click play, it prints out the value 5. But we could also change this and just say we want to display the value of x. And if we click play, it shows us 5 as well. However, if we were to say create a new variable y and assign it the value 6, and we did the same thing, we wanted to display uh, the value of y and the value of x, and we click play, it only shows us 6. And the reason is this is because this is the last value that's basically written here, and this is what's going to be displayed only. So if we wanted to see both values of x and y, we would have to print them. And if we click play, we have both values 5 and 6. Unlike running a Python script from top to bottom, Google Colab allows you to keep variables and memory between cells. So let's create a new cell here using the plus code button. And let's say we want to take the value of x, reuse it, and add 5 to it. So let's just print x plus 5. And if we hit play, we get the value of 10. So this cell took the value of x, which was stored in this cell, and this could be reused in the next cell. In Google Colab, you could also add text in your notebook using Markdown. To do this, let's say above this cell, we want to create a text cell. Here, when we hover over, we have this plus text button. Once we click on that, we get this new special cell where we could use Markdown to create text. So just like in Markdown, we could use the hash symbol for headings. And so this could be an example. And then on the new line, we could create subheadings where we could say variable example. And then on the third line, some regular text. So let's say this is a variable example. And on the left side, we have our actual markdown text that we're using. And on the right side is basically a preview of how it's going to be looking like. And of course, we have different uh, sizes, bolding, italicize, code snippets, uh, images, quotes, bullet points, and much, much more. We could add and customize our markdown text. And so if we want to apply these changes, we will do shift enter on our keyboard and we see our markdown text that we have applied. Google Colab also allows you to interact with the underlying operating system using the exclamation mark. For example, let's say we want to see in which directory we are currently in. So let's create a new code cell. And using the exclamation mark, we can then enter various different Linux commands. So if we want to see what is our current working directory, we use PWD and we run that cell and we see we are currently in the slash content directory. Now let's say we want to list that directory and see what we have in there. So we use the LS command, click play again. And then we see we have a sample data folder. And to see exactly what this is, if we click here on the side on this folder, we have our sample data. So this is basically what we're seeing here. And if we go further, we can copy this and say we want to list what's inside this directory. And we click play and we have a list of different CSV files. 
And if we click over here as well, these are exactly the same CSV files that we see here as well. You can also upload and download files to and from Google Colab. However, since it's an online resource, files you might upload might not be saved indefinitely. To avoid losing important files, you can mount your Google Drive to Colab. To do this, we'll create, again, a new cell here. And we're going to do from google.colab import a drive library. And then we'll use the drive.mount. And we're going to mount this specific folder. So if we mount content directory to the drive folder and we click the play button and this this is going to of course pop up to make sure that you are allowing this so we'll just click connect to google drive allow And we have mounted our drive to this specific folder here. This will give you access to your Google Drive files from within the notebook, ensuring your data is safe. Google Colab also comes with many pre-installed libraries like TensorFlow, Pandas, and NumPy. You can see what's installed by using the pip list Linux command. So let's create a new cell using the exclamation mark again to execute our Linux commands and we'll use the pip list and let's click play. And here we have a list of all the libraries that we have installed. Now, if you need a library that isn't installed, you can use the pip command as well to install it. So let's create a new code cell. We use the exclamation mark to execute our Linux commands. And let's do pip install. And let's randomly choose a library called PyDub. And we click play. Depending on your internet connection, this might take longer or shorter. But luckily, this was very fast. And so let's see if it was installed. So let's create a new code cell again. And let's try importing that library and we click play and it ran successfully. So it found that library and it was installed successfully. You can also install specific versions of libraries using pip as well. So when we create a new code cell, again, using our exclamation, we could do pip install. And let's say we want a specific version of NumPy. So we could do NumPy equals 1.18. Now, if we want to upgrade to the latest version, we can very similarly do pip install minus minus upgrade and NumPy or whichever library that we want to use. Google Colab is an excellent resource for learning, testing, and experimenting with Python code, especially in data science and machine learning. Now, again, do keep in mind because this is a free version, it will have some limited resources, but for learning purposes and for experimenting, this is a really great tool to get started. And you don't have to worry about installing all the necessary libraries that you need or setting up your environments locally. Everything comes out of the box and ready to use. Become a member at AILearningHub.io and get access to personalized mentor guidance early access to AI resources, help with AI projects, and a great learning community.